vest on and I think a tie. And it was so cute. I wanted to say, come up and sit with me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a grandmother, so you know how that goes. But anyhow, it's good to be here. So good to be here after yesterday. Um, I had a two-hour layover in Atlanta. And then because of the storms that you all had here, uh, it ended up five hours after that. So I thought, I'm going to Gaithersburg. And they kept saying, you're going to be here. You're going to be here. <laughs> so uh, it was probably about 9 o'clock when I got in yesterday. But it sure beats being in Atlanta airport. Okay? Thank God for the airport. that gets us everywhere. But this is where I wanted to come. And Amen. Here I am. And here you are. So how's everyone doing? Blessed, blessed, blessed. I love the, the choice of songs this morning and the beautiful harmony. You have a wonderful praise team here that leads us to the throne of God, and uh, I'm so grateful to get to worship Him. He's done so much for us. You know, as Pastor was talking about the tithe, and, you know, there's been so much controversy over the tithe and, you know, da-da-da-da-da. The bottom line is, why do we tithe? This is not in my message, okay? <laughs> why do we tithe? Well, first of all, it's in the Word of God to do so. But we tithe and return that 10% back because we love Him. That's the heart of the whole matter. Because if God can get your money, honey, He's taught you. <laughs> it's just money. You know, but when it gets in the hands of God, he multiplies it, spreads it around like no bank would ever do. You know, there was a time that I was trying to, you know, I could give an offering, whatever, you know, and, and I would I would write down everything. Somebody bring me a dozen eggs at church when we passed through for 26. I'd write down, okay, that was probably a dollar or whatever. Just, you know, the, the harvest coming out. Thought, I can't keep up with you, God. You know, your blessings just run. So don't even try because he's bigger than you could ever think or imagine. He is a good, good father. As we were singing that song, The Goodness of God, all my life he has been faithful. And can't you say the same thing? Yes, we've had we've had some rough rides. How many's had a rough at least one rough ride ride in your life? At least one look around. Keep your hands up. Look around. Because the enemy likes to say, you're the only one that's going through this. No, you're not. <laughs> Welcome to life. But aren't you glad that he's faithful in the tough times? Yeah. Yeah. Hasn't he been faithful in the tough times? Yeah. Yeah. You know, we sing a song, you know, even when it doesn't seem like it's working, even when it doesn't feel like it's working, yep. he is still working. That's right. And I found that God is in the waiting. And, oh, don't we love to wait. <laughs> but, you know, I remember when I first really got the revelation of they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. That word wait there is like a waiter waiting, serving. They that serve the Lord, he renews your strength. And that really blessed my heart. Did that bless you all? <laughs> Look at somebody said, did that bless you? <laughs> now, i like for you to be engaged, okay, and you're going to help me preach this sermon. Did you know that today? Amen. Oh, are you still smiling? Okay, you know you're coming. Well, the title of my, my sermon today is From Here to There. So uh, she doesn't know who Vanna White is. Anybody ever watch Will of Fortune? How many knows who Vanna is? Okay, I was born before the flood. She's after the flood, so she doesn't have a clue. You need to watch Will of Fortune because you're my Vanna. Old one. <laughs> is it still on? Will of Fortune, yeah. is she still on? Yeah. Yes. Uh, I when I'm home, I, I watch Full of Fortune. I really like that. It's good brain power. So anyhow, okay, you can come over here. Give a hand to Miss Vanna. <laughs> I can turn it over. I love illustrated sermons because I'm such a visual, and I know anything that will help me, I'm going to share with you. And so we're going from here. Now you can go back over there, Miss Vanna. <laughs> To there. Okay? So we're going on a journey together, and I know you're going to be blessed because thank you so much. <laughs> if I need you again, I'll call you back up, okay? <laughs> but um, I know that uh, you all have been so blessed with the word that you get here. 
and thank God for the foundation of the word because you know in my my journey and I'm not going to dwell on the tough times because we've all had tough times everybody's got a story okay but my story is he's brought me through them all amen, amen. and he will continue to do that but God has just he's just so faithful and I just can't get away from that how faithful God has been to us and he always will be faithful and then look at someone next to you and say your God and my God is faithful we serve the same God amen so from here to there okay parents when your children were younger and you were going on a trip did you ever hear them say at least once on the trip, are we there yet? Any parents, grandparents? You probably heard it more than once. You know, are we there? And I know I, I turn around to our daughter Lynette and I said, we're almost there, honey. And so we kind of do this little thing. Well, it's cold, you know. We're not, we're not there yet, so cold. Okay, now it's getting warmer. And so she said, I said, now it's getting red hot. That means we're almost there, right? And so we're going to go on a journey from here to there today. And we're going to be looking at two passages of Scripture, uh, one in Matthew chapter 26 and the other one in 2 Kings chapter 7. Did you ever feel in, in life that... Um, there was something more that you hadn't tapped to, and I'm talking spiritually now. There's something more that you have not tapped into yet, but you know there's somewhere the Lord, the Holy Spirit is wanting to take you. Anybody raise your hand to that? You know, it's just not quite clear yet. I'm here, but there's a there out there somewhere that he's wanting to take me. And I'm here to tell you, if you want to grow in the things of the Lord, and how many wants to grow in the things of the Lord? There's going to be some times where you're going to have a journey from going here to there. And in between this journey is your walk of faith. And he will be with you every step of the way. So looking at Matthew chapter 26, verse 36 in the NIV I'm reading from. This is just before Jesus was going to the cross and he spent the night in the Garden of Gethsemane agonizing in prayer. How many of you saw the, the movie The Passion of the Christ? That was a tough, that was a tough minute. In fact, I had to walk out. It just, it gripped me so much. And I thought, as much as that movie gripped me, and Mel Gibson done a wonderful job on that movie, I think, trying to describe what Christ went through. But that doesn't even, that doesn't even touch it. Because he was, the Word of God said he was unrecognizable. But he did that for you and me. So don't ever let these words come out of your mouth. Well, Jesus has let me down. Or God, I can't find you anywhere. Don't ever let those words come out of your mouth because Jesus paid his life for you. He loves you. Look at someone and say, he really loves you. Now look back at them and say, and he really loves you. <laughs> but he loves us and he's faithful to us. So verse 36 then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, Sit here. Everybody say, Here. here. While I go over there. Everybody say, there. there. Now, I don't know, I don't know what distance that Jesus, you know, walked from here to there, but there was a place where he had to leave the disciples. He said, You stay here. Because I have got to go there. How many have ever had experiences in your life where you knew that the Lord was asking you to go to a there? Anybody ever been there? And sometimes it can be painful. Sometimes you don't understand why, you know, there's another move to make. And please, when I say about going there, you know, to another place, I'm not talking about leaving the church, Okay. Tell the person next to you, did you hear what she said? <laughs> That's not the there I'm talking about. <laughs> You're here, okay? But there's going to be some theirs in our life, all right? And we just want to obey the Holy Spirit. So he told him to stay here because I'm going over there. And I, and I look at this and I think, what if he had not have obeyed 
the voice of his father there in the garden because he was prompted, I've got to go over there, I've got to really get alone because this is something that the biggest, the biggest battle of my life. And he went there. He went there for you and me. And aren't we glad? Aren't we glad that he did? The other portion of scripture I want to look at is in Second Kings chapter 3, verses 3 and 4. Now I'm going to be going back and forth, and I'll tie it all together. But it's the story of four lepers that were put outside of the city. It was a time of famine, and they were surrounded by the Syrian army. People inside the city were starving to death. Now, it doesn't look like any of us are starving to death, right? We look pretty healthy, don't we? You know, speaking of that, I'm, I'm from Ohio, and whenever... Of course, I've been in Oklahoma for over 40 years now, so it's more home than Ohio. But when I would go back home, sometimes maybe I'd gain five pounds or whatever. And my dad, he would say, you really look healthy this time. <laughs> Thank you, Dad. I know what you're saying. <laughs> no, I don't like this five pounds of healthy, okay? And then if I, you know, would lose weight or get below that, he said, you don't look as healthy as you did last year. <laughs> but that was just his take. His take on it. Why did I say it? God only knows. But anyhow, these people, they were starving to death. Now they have leprosy and they're starving to death. They were cannibalizing different people in the city. Just a horrible, horrible scene. They've been outcast. They now have come to the realization they have no good option. Have you ever been to a point in your life where you had no good options? Anybody ever been there? Let me see your hand. Look around, see other people's been there where you've been. So they're starving here, everybody say here, in the city, and they're asking one another, what are we going to do? Verse 3, now there were four men with leprosy at the entrance of the city gate. They said to each other, why stay here? Everybody say here, until we die. If we say we go into the city, the famine is there. Everybody say there and we will die. So if we stay here, we will die. If we go there, we will die. No good option. You think you've been up against the wall? <laughs> None of us has had leprosy, right? None of us has been starving to death, it doesn't look like. All right? We're not facing the Syrian army, but we are facing a wicked world out there, that's for sure, as we all know that. So in other words, why are we going to sit here doing the same old, same old, getting the same results? Okay? Listen, if you and I keep doing what we've always been doing, we're going to keep getting what we've always gotten. Now, if you're doing good things, you're following the Lord to the best of your ability, you keep right on doing it. Okay? But if he's asking something of you and you're just staying right there doing the same old, same old, you're going to keep getting the same result. Because how many of you know if you're going to truly Stay with the plan of God. There's always going to be another level to go to. Are you with me? Now, be honest. We're in church. Okay, be honest outside of church. That was really stupid. But that, that was really funny. Y'all didn't laugh, but but it was funny. All right, I thought it was. Okay. If we don't keep moving on spiritually with God, He will keep. Moving on. What I was trying to say before I got off and said that was funny, it was crazy, was have you ever, or how can I say this? We'll leave that to later. Okay. We, I came from a denomination, and I'm not here to say what denomination it was. I'm not here to bash a denomination. I thank God for what I was taught there. Okay. But I found out as a teenager, there's got to be more. Anybody with me? Anybody with me? Now, thank God for what we know now. But did you know there's more? Now, how many of you like change? Oh, look around. How many of you, you really like change? Okay. Some of us, how many, it unnerves you. you got to change something. <laughs> be honest, be honest, because there's going to be more required of you, and you most likely it's going to be uncomfortable. How many likes being uncomfortable? How many likes getting out of your comfort zone? 
Not all of us are standing in line to do that, are we? But speaking of, of denomination, I'm not anti-denomination, but I have seen where denominations, they have gotten this truth and the Word of God and thank God for it, but they camped right there. And they never moved on. In fact, you know, you can build a monument to a denomination, okay? But God is always requiring more of us. And he's not a mean God because he has more for of us. How many, for us, how many of you like to learn? Now, I know your pastors are really smart and probably you all are really smart too. Let me stop here. Thank you all for showing up for church today because I could have I could have ministered to the pastor's family and we would have had a great time. But, you know, having pastor 26 years, just love, oh, praise God, she's here, they're here, they're here. They keep pouring in. But thank God we've got somebody to preach to. Brother Hayden used to go out and preach to the cabbage patch. <laughs> yeah, I did. So how fun would that be? But thank you for coming. Thank you for serving in your church. Okay? Because I know what it's like on both sides. You know, been, um, we pastored, Bob and I pastored for 26 and a half years, and then we traveled eight and a half before we went home and be with the Lord. And now I am on my ninth year traveling. You all got older, but I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> and we're still going, aren't we? Praise God. But he keeps us strong in what he's called us to do, doesn't he? Because he is so absolutely faithful. So stay with God and you'll continue to grow. And the more that I learn, the more I realize I don't know anything compared to what is out there to learn, right? So how many wants to grow in the things of God? And I know uh, my home church, Pastor, I most always I always take notes in church. I mean, that's just me. And then there will be times where there's a challenge. And I'll write at the top of my page, challenge. I'll go back and read those notes, and I thought, ooh, I remember when he preached that. I knew a challenge was coming. I thought, dear Lord, I'm not ready for this challenge. Anybody ever been there? But then I thought, okay, Lord, I want to be ready because you're requiring more of me. And it's a good thing because he's a good God. When he requires more of you, just step in place and go from here to there. Are you with me? All right? So they say, why sit here and die? Let's go. What do we have to lose? No doubt, you know, they've got missing fingers. So I've never seen anyone in the natural with leprosy. I've seen pictures, and it's horrid. It's what's happening to them. So they're weak. You know, they haven't eaten. They're starving to death. No doubt they're leaning on one another, holding each other up. And listen to this. And they said, we're going to march right into the enemy's camp. Now, if we had to march in the enemy's camp, I think you and I can make it, okay? Because we look pretty healthy and strong. But you realize they were lepers starving to death. And they said, we're going to march into the enemy's camp. Why sit here till we die? We're going to leave here and go there. And if we don't make it over there, heaven's going to be sweet, right? But they had to go from a here to there. But I love their courage here. Listen, while they were going from here to there, God did something in the process. He manifested to the degree that he multiplied the sound of their feet. Four lepers. Everybody do this. Four lepers. He multiplied the sound of their feet to the degree that the Syrian army thought it was a whole army coming after them. You think God won't provide for you? Get over yourself. I don't know if I said that last year, but I've been saying it a lot because I say it to me. And whatever God is saying to me, I'm just going to pass it on. So look at somebody real sweetly, real kindly. Say, Get over yourself. <laughs> Did they smile while they were saying it? Now look at somebody else and say, you really need to get over yourself. <laughs> we, we all do. We all do, right? You know, I consider myself, you know, an organized uh, planner. But I, I laughed. I, I've talked to the Lord about this. And I said, Father, 
I'm sure there is times that you just looked over at Jesus and said, if she would just lay her organization aside and remember that we've got this. <laughs> yeah. Because he does, organization is good and all that, but just get out of his way and let God be God in your life. Amen? Are you still with me? Okay, so he multiplies the sound of their feet and the entire army coming after they ran out of there, left their food, clothes, left everything. Four lepers. Say that with enthusiasm. Four lepers caused an entire army to run away. Isn't God big? Get excited with me. Isn't God big? He is big. You think he won't take care of you? He sure will. So do you need courage in your life? Is there anyone here today? And hey, we're family. Okay? Is there anybody here? You need courage in the next phase of your life that may be ahead of you. Anybody need courage? Well, you know, I'm not a great orator, you know, like your pastor. Okay? But I'm an encourager. And you know what encourager does? Puts courage into others. Because somebody put courage into me after Bob went home to be with the Lord in 2013. When I was at a place here, and he was saying, I want you to continue on with the ministry. And he was going there wherever there was. And, you know, I just went to the Lord. I don't know if I've told this here before. I have several places. And I, I'm not going to dwell on my story, but I just want to share this much of it. I went to the Lord and I said, Father, I said, when I felt that he was saying, I want you to carry on with the ministry. And we were traveling. You know, Bob taught here. Bob was a great teacher. He was a great, just like, you know, your pastor Bob, your father-in-law, and like the rest of your family. And so I said, here's what I said. And I really thought I was being humble. And I said, Father, what are you thinking? <laughs> I mean, I wasn't ugly. I mean, I was just crying. I'm grief-stricken. My world has been wrong. I said, what are you thinking? Me? But I can't teach like Bob. And then I saw it. I left him out. Didn't mean to. But I, the words I and me. But then I can't teach like Bob. What do you mean? Me, me, and I. So when I say get over yourself, I had to get over myself and so do you, okay? It's not fair if you don't have to get over yourself, okay? <laughs> And so thank God for it, because pride can be so sneaky and so subtle. And so I realized he wasn't calling me to teach like Bob. He was just telling me, I want you to continue on with him, and I want you, and it's not going to be about you. It's going to be about him. So I went from here to there. Was it a tough journey? You bet it was. It was very tough, just like some journeys that you have taken. So it's not about me, okay? You all have your story. But I'm here to tell you, whatever God calls you to do, he will equip you, he will strengthen you, he will send people to encourage you and strengthen you along the way, such as your pastors. Because people would say to me in my, in my journey of, of traveling, I'd say, yeah, you're, you're so strong, you're such a strong person. I'd say, hold it, hold it, hold it. I know where my strength comes from. I know where my help comes from. Thank you. But, I didn't get here by myself. You understand what I'm saying? I've had a whole lot of help to be able to get to this place. Because standing in the pulpit was not where I wanted to be. Okay? I'd rather be doing the music. Because that's what I was more familiar with. But thank God he knows what he's doing. And here I am. And you're here to listen to me. How encouraging is that? So back there in 2014... I'm thinking, how, 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 me, me, me. And now I'm looking at him, him, him. <laughs> okay, because that is who it's about. So whatever he asks you to do, he will equip you and be an encourager to other people because we all need to be encouraged. Okay? So I just speak encouragement to you wherever you're at in your journey of faith, you can do it. You can get through whatever comes your way. And he's the same God in the good times as he is in the tough times. Amen? Amen? So look at somebody again, real strong, and say, get over yourself. Y'all still love me? You still love that person next to you that told you to get over yourself? Okay. So they left a place of brokenness. Okay? You know, we come to church, and, you know, 
we're faith people, and thank God for it. We walk by faith and not by sight. But you know, I never know in any church I'm going to, including here today, you could be sitting here today and it was all you could do to get to church today. I know. I had an experience like that the first time I went back to church after Bob passed. And I told my daughter, I said, I want to go in after the worship starts. Because I I just wasn't, um, didn't feel like I was strong enough to not cry. And you know, if you're going through grief and you start crying, people around you, they don't know what to say. They don't want to know what to do. They didn't want to draw attention to myself. And, and so I told her, I said, okay, I think we can go in now. It's out in the foyer. And uh, so she starts to open up the door, and I said, I don't think I can do it. I don't think I can do it. Let me tell you about the role of a pastor. Thank God for pastors. Don't you thank God for your pastor? Have you found out that he's not perfect? Anybody found out Pastor John's not perfect? Pastor John, I pray be safe in saying you found out that they're not perfect either. <laughs> but we serve a perfect God. So just get over yourself. Pray for him. He'll pray for you. And the journey will be so much sweeter. So I'm standing there, and I think, I just don't. You know, because worship, worship is my my thing. And that music starts, and they're worshiping God. And I'm thinking, Bob's up there around the throne, and I'm left here. <laughs> and so I'm sorry for myself. And about that time, over to the left, I heard a door slam. And it was my pastor. And he came out, and he must have picked up on what was going on. He says, can I walk in with you? I said, you sure can. I mean, he was a pastor. You know, but that's how I got through the door that day, Pastor John, was my pastor said, can I walk in with you? So never underestimate how much we in the body of Christ need one another. Okay, because we really need one another. All the more so with what's going on in our world today. How many knows we need one another? Look at your neighbor and say, I need you. Now turn back and say to that person who said to you, and you really need me. Because we do need one another. And, you know, we're good at faithing it. You know, people come in, and, how you doing? Fine. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> we don't say that, okay? And I'm not saying dump the whole nine yards of what you're going through, you know, in five minutes on somebody. But, you know, it's not a, it's not a disgrace as faith people. This is not in my notes, people. Somebody needs it. It's not a disgrace if you're going through a tough time to how you doing to say, I could use some extra prayer. Amen. Anybody ever? It's not a disgrace. It's not a hindrance to your faith to call out for help. Right? Jesus called out to his Father. Let this cup pass from me. But then he turned around, not my will, but yours be done. So you never know who's sitting in here today. I don't know unless the Holy Spirit would pick it out or point it out. What you may be going through here today. But I will tell you this. You will get through it if you stay with God. And if you need to call out for help, call out for help. It's okay. Right? Find somebody. Find you a tribe of people that will pray for you and stand with you. It's not a sign of weakness. Is not a sign of weakness to say, why do we have prayer lines? Because people need help in that area. Anybody ever been in a prayer line? Yeah. How about the rest of you? Anybody ever been in a prayer line? Maybe I should have a prayer line today so you know what it feels like to be in a prayer line. <laughs> okay? There's anointing there. But sometimes the test or trial you may be going through, it may not come through laying on hands in the prayer line. It may just be you and God alone working through it. But either way, you will come through. Look at somebody and say, I promise you, stay with God. You will come through with victory in Jesus' name. Just look at somebody and smile and say, God is good to us. Amen. He's so good. I'm enjoying speaking to you. All right? So if you're just here today and that's what's happening, it's going to get better for you. Right? Let's look at, remember the story of Esther? She was here as a Jewish girl. 
realizing that if something doesn't change, her entire nation is going to be destroyed. What did she do? She had to leave her here to go there. And what did she say in that journey? If I perish, I perish. But I'm going to leave here. And she saved an entire nation, leaving her here to go there. Amen? So you never know what all is involved when God is asking you. The difference between here and there could be the difference between defeat and victory. It could be the difference between maintaining or gaining. Here is your circumstances, but there could be your breakthrough. Amen? So two things of utmost importance during this time, be obedient to what God is asking of you and trust him. Haven't you found out that you can trust God? And you know, you hear people say, well, I don't see that God is a good God. They must not have a relationship because when you have a relationship with your father, you know good and well he is a good, good father, as Pastor said to us earlier. Amen? So don't abandon or quit during the process. Jesus knows the struggle. He will not abandon you or leave you. Now back to Matthew 26, verse 37. Jesus is overwhelmed in the Garden of Gethsemane. He was under such pressure that he thought he was going to die, but he pushed through. How many would say, maybe it wasn't to this degree, there's times you were going through a test and trial of your life, you felt like you were going to break under it? Anybody ever been there? Let's, go ahead, lift your hands up. I think we've all had those moments in our life and serving God, and it'd be good if we didn't have to go through those, but I tell you what, when you go through them with God, you come out stronger. How many's found that out? When you go through a storm, and I live, in, I live in Oklahoma, you know, we have a lot of tornadoes there. Yay. So we get to pray about storms, you know, a lot. But, and I tell people, okay, when you hear the meteorologist say, next week is going to be tornado activity galore. So I start praying right then against those storms and taking authority. It's a lot easier then than waiting to us barreling down your driveway. Okay? So he's given us authority for a reason, right? And so thank God we get to use that authority in going through storms of life. So whatever you may be facing here today, I promise you, you will get through if you'll stay with God. And you've been taught here how to stay with God. Amen? And aren't you grateful for that? Because I'm telling you, if I did not have the foundation of the Word of God under me, you know, in storms that I've come through, I don't know where I would be today. Because when tough times come, you're going to escape to something. Right? It's who you walk with. It's who you're acquainted with. Who you hang out with will determine where you go in those tough situations. But we walk with God. We walk by faith and not by sight. So get you a tribe of people. If, it, if it's tough, get you a tribe of people and say, hey, help me, help me, help me. Somebody help me. Right? Look at somebody and say, it's okay to say help me. Okay? It's not a discreet. Anybody need help here today? P- pastor raised his hand. Can you imagine if a pastor needs help? That's not sad. That's a fact. And thank God he, he's he's got the courage. It doesn't matter what you think about it. If you think, well, our pastor must be weak. He raised his hand whenever she said anybody need help. Our pastor, our leader said he needed help. Okay, help's on the way. Stand up, church. Stretch your hand toward your pastor. Come on, stand up. You know, quickly, quickly, quickly. Move, 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 move. Stretch your hand toward your pastor right now. I don't know what it is. I don't have to know what it is. But he raised his hand. So you just pray in the Holy Ghost here for, you know, about a minute. Okay? Lift your voice because I'm going to lift mine too toward your pastor. Okay? Father, we thank you for Pastor John. We thank you, Father, for whatever he's needing help in. That help is on the way. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father, for our leader. We thank you that you strengthen him. You empower him to be all that you called him to do, that you encourage him in the name of Jesus, that he will go out of here today stronger and more confident 
than when he came in. And he came in strong, he came in confident, but he's going to go out stronger and more confident because the body of Christ is surrounding him. And we thank for it. Together we win the victory. We win the victory in Jesus' name. And church, you know what? Not only did you pray for your pastor for help, whatever that may be, but you've got a harvest coming back to you. Yeah. You just sow some great seed. So if you go through something, just say, hmm, you know what? I sowed some I sowed some encouragement and strength to my pastor. Think about pastor. This is not my note. I'm totally embarrassing him, so he'll still have me back, though. I love this man. And I love his wife. And I love his family. And I love you all. I know the beginning of this church. And I know where we are today. And I tell you what, we're going to the other side. Amen. This is no time to quit. This is no time to mouth. I am so off my notes, I don't even know where I'm at. We're there. <laughs> we're there. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So get over yourself. We're going to the other side. Amen? So kick it in high gear and say, if God be for me, who dare be against me? Amen? Who dare be against you, brother? Who dare be against you? I'm not usually this bold, but my God, I am today. <laughs> Who dare be against Nobody. you? That's right. Because God is for you. He's for all of you. Look at each other and say, God is for us. We're going to make it. The world has gone nuts. They're crazy out there. Crazy. I just got from Tacoma, Washington, and I thought, dear Lord, how do y'all live here? <laughs> you know, but they're a voice. And we have a voice, and I thought, God bless you all. In Oklahoma, we live in a bubble compared to them, you know? But thank God, bust that bubble and get out of that bubble and do something. Hey, man, I'm not scolding you, am I? Because I'm not, I'm not a yelling screamer. But it sure is coming out different, okay? We're, our, we're going there. We're leaving here and going there, hey, man. We've gotta, we have got to get it going. Not that you haven't been, okay? But don't sit here and get stagnant, okay? When a sermon comes forth and the scriptures that you're, I know going to Rhema, I would hear people, when Brother Hagen would do Mark 11, I would hear people at Rhema. With Brother Hagen, I'm going to go, oh, who's going to read that one again? <laughs> you know, and I wanted to kind of say, maybe you're the one that needs to hear it again. <laughs> but I didn't say it, okay? So, how many of you have read a scripture or heard Pastor speak something and you had a thought, oh, here we go again. Be honest. Be honest. Okay, we've all done it. Right? Okay, because we got our humanity. Right? But I tell you what, there's times that I have read a scripture and have read it, grew up with it, could quote it, I mean, again and again and again. And all of a sudden, I read that scripture rather than I never saw that before. Anybody ever had that happen to you? You know why? Because today, what you're hearing today, this is where you are. This is your year. But you can go back and read a scripture maybe that I shared today, and you're there, and it's more illumination because you have grown from here to there. That's why you see it now. That's what growing is all about. What you see today, thank God for. But there's more. So don't get that attitude. Nope. Look at somebody say, drop your attitude, honey. Yeah. Don't say honey. Just drop your attitude. Okay. Baltimore says hun. Huh? Baltimore says hun. Hun? Hun. Yes. Hun. Oh, well, I don't know who's sitting by who, so. <laughs> <laughs> it's everybody. Oh, it's everybody? Oh, yeah, you say it's everybody. I've been coming here for years. I've never heard that. You didn't go to Baltimore. You're here in yeah. Oh, that's right. <laughs> uh, okay, you can be see, Thank you for helping me minister that. You see, I told you you were, but I had no idea it was going to go this way. So, praise God. Praise God. We're going from here to there. Amen? Yes, the world's gone nuts, but I tell you what, we're getting stronger. The church is getting stronger. You can't stop the church. No matter how goofy, no matter how many stupid laws they pass, You'll never stop the church of Lord Jesus Christ. We are the church. Amen. So you be encouraged, all right? Okay, don't fight. Don't get in strife because I think I told you, I told somebody a story. I was watching too much news at the time, and the senator still can see that visual. He says, right before they get ready to pass, 
We don't need God. And basically, I'm calm, but you saw the boldness come up. I got on my chair and I said, I was talking, I said, what did you just say? We don't need God? And then I said, where did you come up with that? And I mean, I was just going back and forth, just barking, and it wasn't my nature. And then the story of Moses at the Red Sea with a rod, and I said, what's in your hand, Mo? Rod. He said, stretch that rod, and you know the story, the Red Sea part. And then I thought, what's in your hand, Elaine? A remote. (laughs) 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 I'm in charge of turning it on or off. And so I turned it off real quickly. I repented because I got in strife, bickering back and forth. I didn't help the cause at all. And then I just humbled myself and said, Father, help that man and his stupidity. That his eyes will be open. I don't know if they're open yet or not, but I did pray that. I'm sure other people have too. So don't get caught up in the strife of the world because they will pull you in and cause you to get angry and all that. But there is a righteous indignation, okay? Right? And that uh-huh. that is good. But we get to pray. Amen. Amen. How many likes to pray? I know you all Amen. people of prayer. So we are the church, and we're pulling back the darkness because of what Jesus did at Calvary. We were left here to go there, and from there he knew, I've got to go to the cross. And he got willing, not my will, but your will be done. That's what happened there. Right? Then he goes to the cross from the garden. And from there, he gave his life. They didn't take it. He gave his life. And from there, you know, went into hell and fought for you and I. Another there. But then he came out of the tomb. Death couldn't hold him. Amen. There's always victory for the church. Amen. Amen. Going from here to there. And you know the story. If Satan would only know, he would have never messed with Jesus. Because look, he's got all of us. Amen. So we're we're the church pulling back the darkness. But Jesus pressed through and he overcame Satan. There can be your place of blessing, breakthrough, you'll recognize the purpose of why he was calling you to go from here to there. In the story in Luke chapter 17, ten lepers were healed, but it was they went from here with Jesus to there. And they were healed, and only one came back to thank Jesus. So wherever he takes you, don't forget to thank him for where he's brought you from. Amen. Have a thankful, thankful Heart, start your day out with thank you, Lord, that I'm still alive. Thank you, I still got a voice, and I'm going to use it for you wherever I may go and however you choose to do it. We used to sing a song growing up in church. Lord, I'll go. It was always Mission Sunday. Missionaries coming in. Lord, I'll go where you want me to go. Anybody ever sang that song? Grow up with that? Anybody? Was that a song before the flood? <laughs> Anybody? Larry, you did. Well, anyhow, it's a good song. Lord, I'll go where you want me to go. I'll say what you want me to say, and I'll do what you want me to do. And it was always sung around around the mission program. And I sang that a many, a many a time. It's one thing, honey, to sing, hon, <laughs> it's one thing to sing the song. It's another thing to do the song. <laughs> right? I'll go where you want me to go. Because I know it my hear, you know, I was questioning Dear God, what are you thinking? And he knows our heart. He knows our humanity. And in spite of our humanity, he loves us. Right? And he will encourage us and take us where we need to go. So if you're under any kind of pressure today, the Holy Spirit will walk you through the storms. You know, back to living in Oklahoma, and you have storms here. In fact, I was delayed in Atlanta yesterday because of storms here. That was really fun. But notice the storm passed, and I'm here. Aren't you excited? I am. (laughs) Yeah, seven hours in Atlanta Airport, any airport, is a long time, right? Okay, but I've noticed storms come and storms go. You know, you'll hear your weathermen say, okay, there's a storm getting ready to pass through Gaithersburg. 
okay? And then they say, okay, that storm has passed. What's the word? Through. Storms do not last forever. He will bring you through every single storm. Amen? Because he's faithful. Look at somebody say, our God is faithful. Right? So you will find out when you go through tests and trials, and, you know, God doesn't send tests and trials. It's just called life. And we have things that we have to face in life. Some of us have those Abrahamic moments. And I tell you what, when you go through a, a test or a trial in life, or just your journey walking with the Lord, you will come out stronger. Because I can truly say, and I, I, I'm, I'm boasting in the Lord right now. I hear my heart. I can truly say with that tough, toughest journey in my life was, was Bob going to heaven. Uh, it was hard for me to rejoice he was in heaven. Now, don't get mad at me, okay? Because I thought if I could find a way to go up here and get him, bring him down, I would. <laughs> That's just where I was at. You know, I thought, heaven, you don't need him. I need him, okay? God knows where we're at, okay? But coming through that, Staying with his word, I can truly say I am stronger today than I've ever been in my life. I believe his word today more than ever in my life. Did I have questions? Yes. But he just simply said to me one day, leave the questions alone and stay with me and my word. Because if you don't, you can lose what you know. Amen. You just get to trust him. I used to say when I get to heaven, Pastor, I thought, I'm going to have all these questions. You know what? I don't have a question. One. I'll just be so glad to get there. <laughs> I'm here. Bob, where are you? <laughs> it's Jesus. But he will bring you through, and you will come out stronger every single time. And whatever you went through, you'll be stronger in your faith, I promise you, than ever before in your life. So with all that being said, here's where I feel I want to close this message today. And it's one thing to preach the message. It's another thing, it's one thing to start it, it's one thing to keep on it, but it's another thing to wrap it up. <laughs> okay? And I want to wrap this up right. And so here's what's in my heart, I believe, from the Holy Spirit. If you're here today, here and you know, perhaps, let's say, help me, your Holy Spirit. He's been talking to you about some things. Only you and him know about it. And you've been dragging your feet. Or you've been wondering how this is all going to turn out. Here, you're not going to really know how it's all going to turn out. But when you go there, you'll look back and think, oh, oh. I get it now, but you had to leave here to go there. It's called obedience. Mm -hmm. It's called trust. Amen. We sing, oh, we trust you. Do we trust him? Sure we do. You know how to trust God, right? So if that's you here today, and let me give another part of the invitation, and you're, you're picking up on there's another level that I need to go to. I need to grow. I'm just kind of kind of stuck right here. And I'm not being ugly about it, but I'm just kind of stuck here. Got a little stagnant. And he's saying, come on, come on, move up higher, move up higher. I got more for you. I got more to say to you. And it's all going to be good. You can trust me. And if that's you, in another area, if you've got some prodigals out there that you're believing to come back home, Here's two things the Holy Spirit spoke to me about that. Perhaps you have had something in you since they left, such as if my child, my son or daughter, hadn't been hanging with them, they would have never made that choice. That could be true, but maybe you have forgiveness Listen to me, as kindly as I know how, your child made the choice to do what they did. And what he's saying, forgive 
and let it go, you're believing for them to come back home. Another area, perhaps you have just visited this matter over and over again. If I would have only done this, or if I hadn't have done this, da 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 da, they would have never left. Forgive yourself. Get out of the way. What he said, just get over yourself. Let me visit your son and daughter now that you are forgiving yourself and forgiving people. Get a picture, go bake a cake, put it in the freezer, expect to have a party. Amen. 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 Do you see them coming back? And maybe maybe you push that aside. Maybe you've given up hope. Maybe you're discouraged. I don't know. I'm just putting out what I, what's coming out of me to you. But get a vision of coming back home. You don't know who God will use more than likely. It won't be you. Okay? But get a vision of seeing your son or daughter, grandchild, whomever it may be, coming back home. Can you do that? So if any of this that I've spoken out speaks to you, I want you to come and stand over there because leaving your seat, you're leaving here to go there and you don't have to tell me what is what it's about, but you need to do it. You need to respond, okay, because this is what he gave me and I know this is what he gave me. So now the ball's in your court to make the move because you're going to lead here to there. So would you come? Would you come? It's going to require some growth, require some change. God only knows. 